Let's talk about viscosity. Viscosity there's, uh, has a few effects on our pumping systems. One is, of course, to slow things down and uh, increase the friction head. If we're pumping water versus pumping oil, you can imagine that your friction head is going to be way bigger for the same flow rate. So we have a choice, either to slow down the flow rate or increase the pump size or what have you. The other effect that it has on a centrifugal pump is to um, reduce the ability of the pump to produce pressure and flow. So that for the same flow and pressure, we need to get a bigger pump to do the same job. At one point, if your fluid is way very viscous, a uh, centrifugal pump just is not the right choice, and you have to try and get something else, such as a positive displacement pump, which are readily available in all types of shapes and sizes. So, what is viscosity actually? Well, you can think of viscosity as a layer of fluid, and if you try to move the top layer, with respect to the bottom layer, you're going to need a certain amount of force. So, well, water obviously has low viscosity, it doesn't need a lot of force. But think of something like oil, like jello, you can see you start to see a little bit of force is required uh, to move that top layer. So, on this graph, that's what's called the shear on the bottom axis, and it's the relative movement of the top layer to the bottom layer. On the x axis, we have stress, and that's the stress that's going to develop between those layers. So the, a typical fluid uh, called Newtonian fluid, and that's because Newtonian was the first one to, uh, to describe this, uh, this property, will have a uniform slope. In other words, if you try to deform it, uh, uh, the top layer versus the bottom layer, you'll get a very predictable result in terms of it's always going to be a straight line or a constant um, relationship between the, uh, the strain and the shear. A non-Newtonian fluid has the property that uh, if you shear it very fast, it's going to, the stress is going to be increased very, very quickly so that it's going to behave with this curious shape and uh, the faster you shear it, the, uh, the, the, more, the, more visco the more the viscosity will increase or the apparent viscosity will increase. So uh, on the bottom axis, if you have an ideal fluid, there's very little stress and lots of, um, lots of strain. If, you're, if your fluid is on more on the vertical axis, so uh, a real solid has very little uh, strain but lots of stress because you can't move it very much. In an ideal uh, solid, you can't move at all. And in between, we have a plas a solids such as plastic um, with a plastic property such as uh, ketchups. If you have a ketchup bottle, you try to get the ketchup up, you have to shake it a little bit before you can get it going. So this is what's happening here. It requires a certain amount of force before it actually starts to flow. So here's a very interesting experiment that you, uh, you should take a look at. I have a video of it. It just, uh, anybody can do this at home, it's wonderful. It's, uh, it's with cornstarch and it'll give you an idea of what non-Newtonian fluids, how they behave. And uh, I have a second video and a similar thing that's even more uh, dramatic, and we'll come back and wrap this up. This experiment will show an unusual property of a uh, solution of cornstarch and water. And what we're going to see is the, uh, how the viscosity varies uh, when we uh, shear the, uh, the fluid, or in this case, the viscosity water combination, and uh, watch how the viscosity becomes much heavier in other words, the fluid appears to become much thicker and denser as we shear faster or slower. So I'm going to use about two-thirds cornstarch to one-third water. You don't have to be terribly precise, but really you'll see the results, you'll feel the results. Uh, as you uh, do this experiment yourself. So you want to avoid getting into the trap of adding too much water and then having to put in a lot of cornstarch and too much water. So uh, just be patient and uh, try to get a good blend of a basically a pretty heavy solution of cornstarch water. Okay, uh, we will have it right here. Okay. Yeah. 
So, oh well, you can see this here. But uh, if I put, if I move my finger around into the solution, it's fairly liquid. I mean, it's thick, but you know, it's liquid. But if I try to move it quickly through, it tends to bunch up and become very, very thick and um, high, much more viscous than it was just a moment ago. So the rate at which I shear it, shearing being crosswise like this, influences how it reacts. And uh, viscosity is, is uh, changing. So what you can do here is actually show your friends how liquid this is and rapidly throw it at them and see that actually nothing comes out of the bowl because the speed, the effect of the velocity keeps it almost solid. I put a little bit of this into a shot glass. See an even more obvious effect. I can put my finger in very easily at slow speed. But if I try to get it in quickly, it won't. It acts almost like concrete. It's quite amazing. You should try this. It's great fun. I'm sure your kids will love it. And this is a interesting property of fluids that uh, uh, shows you that certain fluids behave very badly in presence of higher rates of shear. So this type of fluid, if you were to try to pump it with a centrifugal pump, centrifugal pumps turn at high speed, it would be trying to shear this liquid inside the body of the pump, and of course this would only want to tend to lump and uh, stay stuck to the sides. So to pump this, you need a very slow moving pump, uh, positive displacement pump, something that's acting very slowly and will not uh, create make this fluid uh, react in such a, uh, um, become very heavy and lumpy and so viscous that it can't be pumped anymore. So enjoy this experiment.